alcohol places a financial burden on you. Uh, but what most drinkers will never do is work out how much that burden is. Because, like I said, people are motivated to gain pleasure and avoid pain. And nobody wants to put themselves in that much pain. Nobody wants to think about the money they've lost. So I think it's important that you do this, though, because you're buying a product that makes you miserable and you're spending money on it, money that you could spend on better, more worthy things. But how much are you spending? Do you know? I guarantee you, if you think of a number now, you're grossly underestimating the amount that you're spending on alcohol, because we all do. In the same way that when we go and see the doctor and he says, how much are you drinking? We grossly underestimate how much we're drinking. Even when I went to the doctor because I was worried that alcohol had seriously damaged my liver, I had this pain in my right flank and it wouldn't go away and it was there for three months. And I finally plucked up the courage and went to the doctor. So even at this point where it was vital for me to tell the truth, the doctor said, how much are you drinking? And I said, oh, not so much, not so much. I, I used to drink a lot, but not anymore. Why? I was lying at the point when I was screaming out for help. I was still lying about my drinking. So we, we try and avoid things that create pain for us. And one of those is calculating just how much we're spending on this attractively packaged poison. So what I want you to do is get specific. I want you to be totally honest with yourself. I want you to sit down with a piece of paper and be honest about how much you're drinking on a daily basis and how much you're spending. So I'm going to do it now uh, as though I was I'm thinking back to my drinking career. And we'll, we'll work out together just how much money I spend on drinking. So I would drink, well, let's say two bottles of wine a night. That was my go-to amount. All right. So, you know, $15. You, you can get it fairly cheap, can't you? But, <laughs> oh, I'm even more stupid than that. You see, I had this thing to justify my drinking. You see, I wasn't an alcoholic. I was a wine connoisseur. Oh, yes. I even had a little book with tasting notes in. I would buy wine and I would make little notes and give it a score. And I, even, I had apps on my phone and I had computer programs where I would log my tasting journal. I was a prize dickhead, but I was a wine connoisseur. And because of that, I was buying very expensive wine because that validates my belief, doesn't it? If I have a wine rack full of posh wine, that validates my statement that I am an expert in wine. <clears throat> and I mean, I even invested in wine. I had, I had crates of uh, French Bordeaux stored off site in temperature controlled containers that I would never ever see. I would never even see the boxes. At one point I had, I think, uh, 10 crates of Chateau Lynchbarge. It's worth thousands and thousands of dollars. I only had it because then I could say, yes, I'm a wine connoisseur. The truth is I was a connoisseur of nothing apart from bullshit. But anyway, my nightly bottles of wine were the good stuff because I believed I deserved it and I appreciated it because of my refined palate. So I wasn't spending you know, $15 a night. I was spending a lot more than that. So let's say that over a week I was spending about $200, $210 uh, on wine. All right. And then at the weekend, uh, I would have a bottle of whiskey as well. I would uh, I would throw in a, a bottle of Jack, uh, which I would spread over the weekend. So let's say my weekly spend on alcohol is about two hundred and thirty dollars. OK, now, if we're going to be totally honest about this, we have to consider everything we do with our drinking. So let's also think about the special occasions where we drink a little bit more. You know, those mornings where you wake up and you go, oh, that was a big night. So birthdays, Christmas, Thanksgiving, barbecues with friends and family, social occasions, uh, meals out with your partner, things like that. So let's, let's just round this up and estimate, let's say $1,000 a year spent on entertainment on top of the normal drinking, or $20 a week. So we're at $250 a week now. Whew. So that's uh, $1,000 a month. And obviously that makes $12,000 a year. Now, of course, you can drink the same amount as I was for a lot cheaper than that, probably about half. 
but this is the, my honest assessment of myself. So $12,000 a year on something that destroyed my health, made me obese, stagnated my career, ruined my marriage, made me a bad parent, made me wake up full of guilt and regret, made me feel tired all the time, damaged my sleep, and just made me downright miserable. I was spending $12,000 a year on that, but it's worse than that. Because I had 20,000 pounds on um, credit cards, I had personal loans, uh, my family were coming to me saying, can we go on vacation? I was saying, I'm sorry guys, we just can't afford it. We were driving around in old cars because just didn't have the money to upgrade. I had a relatively good job back then, but money was just slipping through my fingers. So uh, $12,000 a year. Now, this is where it gets really scary. You've got to remember that my drinking career lasted 20 years. So what does that add up to over 20 years? Well, let's be realistic here. I wasn't drinking at that level for the full 20 years, so let's do it over 15 years. You ready for this? $180,000. $180,000 on poison in a pretty bottle. It's insane. It made me miserable. It shortened my life. It damaged everything. $180,000. I mean, whew, that's painful. Because I basically, I've, I've thrown that down the toilet, haven't I? I mean, that's what I've done. I've put it in my mouth and then I've stood over a urinal somewhere and flushed it down the toilet. Genius. What could I have bought with that? Well, I had a quick look on the internet. Could have got this uh, four bedroom home in Atlanta four bedroom house in Atlanta, Georgia. I could have got a brand new two bedroom apartment in Perth, Australia. Just paid for it with cash, no mortgage. Amazing, huh? Or maybe I could have been the best dad ever and taken my kids to Disneyland every year. Now there's a thought. So your homework is to sit down and do what I just did. How much have you been spending on alcohol? How long have you been drinking? Work it out. How much have you spent? And get that figure in your head. It hurts, but it's a part of the jigsaw puzzle. You know, when you get to the point when you are so convinced that you no longer need alcohol in your life, you will have this puzzle in your head. And in it, you will see all the bad stuff that was going to happen. You will see all the good stuff that is coming to you. You will see the expense. You will see the damage to your health. You will see the lies by the marketing. You will see the social proof and the nonsense that we tell each other. And it will make this complete puzzle. And this is the foundation of your new self, your new belief, the new happy, sober version of you. Thank you for watching. Do the homework. And I will see you back here for part seven of the Stop Drinking Expert Complete Quit Drinking Course.